Good day yet again, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it's nice to uh, actually meet you again. And um, uh, so we're still continuing on sto stoichiometry. Um, so I just wanted, as I promised, that we'll do a lesson on uh, acids, uh, uh, rather uh, on calculating percentage purity. Um, so uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please just do the right thing, okay? And by the way, you can tell even more people about it. If you're benefiting from it, please just click that like button, okay? Uh, so that uh, our algorithm gets going, all right? So in this case, um, I wanted us to deal with percentage purity. We're still doing stoichiometry, all right? Let's get into it. So they give us an example here uh, of 8 grams of uh, pure aluminium, okay? Or impure, rather, impure aluminium, okay? So we add it to excess and excess amount of sulfuric acid. Okay, so the reaction occurs there. Right, so we can see we've got a balanced equation uh, for that reaction there. Okay, they say the volume of hydrogen uh, that is produced is 6.72 cubic decimeters, and we are going to assume STP. Right, let me just give you a little bit of a background of um, how we normally, um, um, you know, just... Uh, you know, calculate percentage uh, purity. So essentially, I want you to imagine you've got this uh, sample of, you know, aluminium, uh, you know, in this case, aluminium. So essentially, there are some impurities there. So in actual sense, in, in the actual sense, you can't use the entire 8 grams and say, well, I can calculate number of moles and therefore uh, find out the, uh, uh, you know, number of moles from that mass. Okay. Why is that? Because not all of those 8 grams of aluminium, all right, or rather not all of that 8 grams is actually made out of aluminium. Okay. So yes, truthfully, the aluminium is going to react with the sulfuric acid, the actual aluminium. So from that 8 grams, remember that I don't have uh, um, the actual amount of the aluminium that's going to be there. However, I want you to think about it. So reaction between aluminium, the reaction between aluminium and sulfuric acid would actually produce those products. Whatever impurities are there cannot produce hydrogen, okay? So what I'm trying to say is, in these questions, what they do is, they will probably give you an amount of the impure substance, okay? Of course, our assumption is that, uh, or rather they told us that uh, sulfuric acid is in excess. Now, the moment they, told, they tell us that sulfuric acid is in excess, it simply means that aluminium will be the limiting reagent. Please remember that, ladies and gents, okay? Right? So, of these 8 grams, some of them are actually something else, okay? Call it whatever, okay? Right. So, in this case, we simply want to find out how much of this 8 gram is actually aluminium, all right? So, I want you to stay with me and as we do this example together, okay? Right, so I'm simply going to say, ideally, I'm going to get a, a hydrogen, and where does the hydrogen come from? It comes from the actually the, the actual pure aluminium. So is it possible for me to find out the number of moles of hydrogen that I produce, and as a result, work my way back to then determine the moles of aluminium. Of course, that's possible, right? So let's start right there. So what did they give me? They gave me that the volume of hydrogen at STP. Now, please note, if you don't know how to convert uh, volume to moles, please remember, refer back to my videos that we've already covered, okay? We've really covered this uh, quite adequately. So I'm, I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to take the... Uh, the um, so... We want to convert that volume, okay, that's given uh, of hydrogen, and we want to convert it to moles. And remember, 
The formula to do that, that's number of moles, it's volume divided by the molar volume. And remember, they told us it's at STP. So we know the molar volume at STP is actually 22.4, right? So now we know that the number of moles, remember this is the number of moles, these are the number of moles of hydrogen, right? So number of moles of hydrogen, that's going to be volume divided by the molar volume. So they gave us the volume, okay? They gave us the volume, it's 6.72, but we know that the molar volume at STP is 22.4 cubic decimeters per mole, okay? So now I'm going to say, all right, let's find out 6.72 divided by 22.4. Okay, that will give us uh, 0 0.3 moles. Okay, so it means that the number of moles of hydrogen that was produced is 0 0.3 moles. Okay, so that's 0 0.3 moles of hydrogen that we've got there. Right, now please I want you to note, ladies and gents, then I'm going to say, okay, now that we've got the number of moles that we actually produced, remember those number of moles were produced because of the aluminium reacting with the sulfuric acid, okay? So I want to find out, if I was able to produce this amount of hydrogen, then how much aluminium did I use, okay? So let's go to our mole ratios, okay? So it says for every two moles, of aluminium remember we always start at um at our ratio with our ratios rather uh, if you don't mind let me write over here so i'm going to say well for every two moles of aluminium i seem to produce three moles of hydrogen okay right so i start with my ratios two of aluminium produces three of hydrogen why am i using aluminium and hydrogen because I want to find out how much aluminium I get, okay, or I used, rather, in order to produce the hydrogen. Hydrogen, I've already gotten the number of moles. So now I'm going to say for every two, there's three. So therefore, for how much aluminium, I'm just going to use that as X, for how much aluminium am I going to produce 0 0.3 moles of hydrogen, okay? Right, so you can cross multiply there. Okay, so that's 3 times x. Again, that's 3x. 2 times 0 0.3, that's going to be uh, 0 0.6. Okay, and you can divide both sides by 3 there, of course. And so x, remember what does x represent in this case? The number of moles of aluminium, right? So I seem to get x to be 0 0.2 moles. So it means that the number of moles of aluminium was 0 0.2 moles. So it means that this is the amount of aluminium, okay, that actually uh, reacted, okay? So of these 8 grams, the actual amount, the pure amount of aluminium was only 0 0.2 moles. Now remember, you can't compare moles and grams. So what I'm going to do to calculate the percentage purity, let me find out. This is the total mass, all right? That mass that they gave me, that's the total mass, including the impurities. Let me find out the mass of the actual aluminium, okay? So I'm going to say, all right, if I've got 0 0.2 moles, I'm, uh, the number of moles that's going to be mass divided by molar mass, what am I doing now? I'm trying to find out the number of moles of aluminium, okay? So, I'm going to say, okay, I know the number of moles, that's 0 0.2. I hope you're following, ladies and gents, right? So, number of moles, that's mass, divided by my molar mass. If you remember, we already had gotten that from the peri uh, periodic table, okay? So, uh, aluminium, that will be 27 grams per mole, right? So that's the molar mass uh, for aluminium. So that's 27. And all that you simply do. So, okay, 0 0.2 uh, multiplied by 27. Okay, uh, I believe we will get uh, 5.4. Okay, so that's 27 multiplied by 0 0.2. Okay, uh, that gives us 5.4 grams. Now, all right. Now, ladies and gents, let's just uh, find out what we've just done here. 
So this tells me of the eight grams that were given, all right? Remember that was impure. So of the eight grams, it was the aluminium, but it was also other impurities, other, uh, other substances, right? And remember the other stuff did not react, did not participate in this reaction, okay? So how then do I calculate my percentage purity? Okay, I'm simply going to say, okay, percentage purity. I'm sure some of you have figured it out by now, right? It's going to be the actual mass of aluminium divided by the total mass of what was given, right? Multiplied by a um, hundred. So you can say it's the mass of the pure aluminium divided by the mass of the impure aluminium. Okay, so that's, I just wanted you to get, it's the actual mass, all right, of the aluminium divided by the total or the mass of the impure sample, right? So in this case, I'm going to have 5.4. Okay, sorry about that. Divided by 8. And, okay, let's take that up a little bit. Multiply that by 100, okay? So, uh, what do you get? So, that's 5.4 divide by 100. I mean, divide by 8, okay? Multiply it by 100. And you should get about 67.5%, okay? So, that's 67 0.5%. So it means that sample there was actually 67.5% pure. Now, for some of you, I'm sure you 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 quite uh, able to realize this by now. Okay, there's nothing wrong. You could have actually used uh, not the mass uh, or rather the number of mole um, the the number of moles rather. Um, Remember here, what we did was to convert the number of moles and we made that into mass. You could have actually uh, stuck to uh, to the number of moles, right? Um, but I won't, I, I won't go into that uh, for now, all right? So uh, in this case, all that we simply uh, note is that we were able to get the percentage purity of the substance, okay? Why is that? Because... At the end of the day, we realized we were given the amount of hydrogen that was produced uh, at the um, uh, when the reaction actually gets to its completion. Okay, when the reaction stops, right? So as a result, we're able to get the amount of aluminium. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Okay, right. And this is how you tackle all your questions that have to do with percentage purity. You you always notice what you're given, right, in your reactants. But you're also given the products, you use the products to find out the, uh, the actual amount of the reactants and you get the percentage from that. Okay, right. Actually, I wanted to show you the other method, but now let's not prolong it. Okay, right. I hope you understood that. Thank you so much and I'll see you again next time. And we'll be tackling some uh, questions on acids and bases. But I want to kind of extend acids and bases and show you how we can use that um, this uh, uh, um, this understanding of stoichiometry to answer those long eight marks question on acids and bases. Thank you again, ladies and gents. See you again next time. Walla walla, sharp.